channel today let us start uh, the histology of respiratory system so first the air uh, the air passes to the nasal cavities and from there into pharynx and there into trachea bronchi and next into intrapulmonary continuation so in the pharynx pharynx is again divided into nasal part which is mainly respiratory in function oral part and also laryngeal part laryngeal part is laryngeal and oral part are mainly elementary in function so interior of uh, passage is lined by a pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium that is mainly having more number of serous glands uh, and also having more number of goblet cells which secrete the mucus and also help in trapping the dust molecules so the nasal cavities are having vestibule that is skin line and it contains hair and also sebaceous gland and we also have olfactory mucosa where we have a smell receptors on superior nasal concha and the wall of each half of uh, respiratory mucosa is mainly lined by the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium which lies on the basement membrane and the respiratory mucosa have the goblet cells non ciliated columnar cells and basal cells so the goblet cells are scattered and they secrete mucus and non ciliated columnar cells also have microvilli and they are secrete the serous fluid and the basal cells are near to the basal lamina and they replace those uh, lost cells or dead cells so the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium is on the basement membrane and next it has a fibrous tissue which are having the numerous uh, lymphocytes that is having basophilic granules and eosinophilic granules basophilic granules mainly secrete amylase and eosinophilic granules mainly secrete the lysozyme enzyme and the deeper to the mucosa so after this uh, deeper to the mucosa we have a capillary network where there is a cavernous tissue and next the para nasal sinuses are also lined by a respiratory mucosa and also periosteum so the respiratory mucosa is pink in color so the respiratory mucosa along with the periosteum is known as muco periosteum because mucosa muco and periosteum lamina propria so next comes the lamina propria where there are lymphocytes plasma cells macrophages neutrophils eosinophils and there are more amount of eosinophils because uh, in especially allergic rhinitis or common cold so now let, let us see in detail of olfactory mucosa its main function is to uh, sense the smell so olfactory mucosa is mainly yellow in color because of a pigment known lipoprotein which is present so let us see it so yellow color and it is having lining epithelium and also lamina propria and the lamina propria have basal cells that is deep in the epithelium and they replace the dead cells some are also supporting in function that basal cells some are also in uh, protecting function so actually uh, olfactory mucosa is pseudo stratified and it is thicker when compared with other respiratory mucosa so it is pseudo stratified and thicker when compared with the respiratory mucosa and uh, let us see the types of cells olfactory cells sustentacular cells supporting cells or basal cells uh, we already discussed basal cells right now let us discuss about olfactory cells these are unique cells because they contain cell, bo cell bodies in the epithelium and the olfactory cells are modified neurons and they are distal and distally they have dendrite so olfactory cells are modified neurons and they have distal and proximal processes and distal process is called dendroid and it goes up to the surface and end in a thickening uh, in a rod or knob and they are non motile olfactory cilia arise and they are having short life and the dead cells are replaced by the basal cells example we can take a regeneration of neurons in a mammals so this is the only regeneration of neurons taking place in mammals that is by a help of basal cells so next we have sustentacular cells which are supporting cells they have microvilli and the cytoplasm is yellow in color because of lipophus skin and uh, it's a remnant of phagocytosed olfactory cells and the sustentacular cells are phagocytic and next uh, lamina propria lamina propria have blood capillaries lymph capillaries olfactory nerve bundles serous glands of baumann which mainly help to transfer the smell from the air to the receptor on the olfactory cells and also offer the protection against the bacteria now let us check out these structures in a diagram so that we can understand it more clearly so here we can check out the structure of the respiratory part of the nasal mucosa so these are the typical ciliated cells and this is a goblet cell 
and this is a non ciliated cell with along with the microvilli this is the basal cell as i said that uh, replaces the dead cell or lost cells and these are the capillaries mucus glands and the serous glands so the mucus serous is glands are present in a submucosa layer actually and here we can check out the olfactory mucosa which is seen in a section which is mainly stained by the routine methods so olfactory mucosa first one is a clear zone of the cytoplasm and next one is a several layers of nuclei and third is a capillary layers this is a capillary and four we have here the Bowman's gland and five is the nerve fiber so this is the cells to be seen in olfactory epithelium mainly uh, the receptor cell as i said it has a distal process uh, and also a proximal process and this is a supporting cell and this is a basal cell of an olfactory nerve fiber now let us check out the pharynx so the pharynx wall is mainly fibromuscular and uh, the nasopharynx is silo, uh, nasopharynx is nothing but near to the nasal area the pharynx then it is known as nasopharynx it is ciliated columnar pseudo stratified ciliated columnar right mm, and uh, inferiorly it has soft palate oropharynx laryngopharynx and these are made up of stratified squamous epithelium and sub epithelium aggregations are present in the posterior wall of a nasopharynx and the auditory tube orifice forms the nasopharyngeal and also tubal transits so there are numerous mucus glands in the submucosa and includes the soft palate so by that we complete the pharynx next let us see the larynx so larynx is nothing but the epithelium of the mucosal membrane is mainly made up of pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium and the epiglottis arib epiglottic folds vocal folds are lined by the stratified squamous epithelium and the goblet cell sub epithelial glands are mucus covering by an epithelium and uh, in mucus we have more amount of epiglottis ary epiglottic folds saccule and serous glands ary epiglottic folds are also called as arytenoid glands and the vocal folds are having microvilli and microplicae which keep them moist and the vocal folds is a connective tissue they are having no lymphatic vessels and so that as there are no lymphatic vessels there is only less chance to get the cancer in that uh, larynx and the cartilage is mainly of hyaline type calcification may occur and uh, epiglottis um, cuneiform arytenoid and corniculate are elastic cartilages and they are having no calcification because in elastic cartilage there is no calcification taking place but in hyaline there may be calcification next let us see the epiglottis so epiglottis also have some taste prints present in the epithelium and the centrally they have the elastic cartilage upon which the mucous membrane is present and it is lined by the stratified squamous epithelium which is non keratinized mainly and the posterior lower is covered by the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium so here we can check out the epiglottis so its surface is mainly covered all over by the stratified squamous epithelium and the number one here is marked here you can see this is the elastic cartilage and number two are the blood vessels which are present and three is the glands so these are the glands which are present in the epiglottis now let us start with the trachea so trachea you can see the uh, this one is a cartilage in the trachea let us come from outside to inside so you can see trachea is mainly divided into mucosa layer submucosa layer and smooth muscle or cartilage layer and the uh, adventitia layer so the mucosa layer you can see this is having a goblet cells and it is mainly made up of pseudo stratified columnar epithelium and uh, in submucosa you can see there are serous glands mucus glands so you can see this fourth one this is a serous gland and this is the mucus glands which are present in a submucosa and some blood vessels nerves may also be present and after submucosa we have our smooth muscle layer which is mainly containing our smooth muscles and also there is hyaline cartilage cartilage in smooth muscle so this is the cartilage and this is the smooth muscle layer this is the next layer you can see the cartilage is present as isogenous groups of cartilage this is mainly hyaline cartilage and finally at the outside we have our adventitia layer lining it so let us see our trachea here so trachea is having the 16 to 20 cartilages which are mainly c shaped yeah you can see the structure here so this at the low power section we can see the trachea this is a smooth muscle and this is the lumen and this is a cartilage in a c shaped ring and here you can find out the mucosa 
सो द ट्रकिया इज सी शेप्ड हायल इन कार्टिलेज एंड इट इज ओपन पोस्टीरियरली एंड ए जॉइनिंग कार्टिलेज फ्यूज विद इट एंड फॉर्म अ वाई शेप्ड एंड एंड द इंटरवल इज मेनली फिल्ड बाय फाइबरस टिश्यू विच इज कंटिन्यूस विद द पेरिकॉन्ड्रियम सो एस एस एड दिस इज अ कार्टिलेज एंड स्मूथ मज लेयर सो हियर वी हैव आर पेरिकॉन्ड्रियम लेयर and next uh, we have gap between the cartilage is present posteriorly and it is filled by smooth muscle and also fibrous tissue so the connective tissue in the wall is mainly made up of elastic fibers and the lumen have the mucous membrane made up of pseudo stratified ciliated columnar it may also contain goblet cells basal cells mainly lie near the basement membrane and the lymphocytes are present deeper to the epithelium sub epithelial connective tissue have elastic fibers that is serous and mucosa glands are also present and lymphoid aggregations are present in the sub epithelial connective tissue eosinophilic leukocytes are also present so by that we complete our trachea and bronchi next let us start with the lungs so this is a histological picture of lung so here one and two marked are known as pleura and and the third one is our alveolus and the fourth one is a bronchus and fifth one is a smooth muscle and the sixth one this is the cartilage and these are the glands and the epithelium of bronchus as i said this is a bronchus so this is a epithelium of a bronchus and the bronchiole is present over nine is our bronch yeah so this is our bronchiole and next uh, this is our artery and this is our respiratory bronchiole and next we have our alveolar duct so this is our alveolar duct and this is our atrium of our alveolus and so this uh, basic histological structure of our lungs and let us start with our lungs histology so there are intrapulmonary passages that is the principal bronchus first divides into the secondary or lobar bronchi so first uh, let us yeah so first the principal bronchus divides into secondary or lobar bronchi and next into tertiary segmental branches and next into smaller bronchi into bronchioles and next into lobular bronchiole so i can see here from here terminal division of bronchus next into lobular bronchioles and from that into terminal bronchioles and that into respiratory bronchioles and next into alveolar duct after alveolar duct so after alveolar duct we have our atrium and after the atrium we have our alveolar sac and after that we have our each alveolus so the larger intrapulmonary bronchi are similar to the trachea as i said that mucosa sub mucosa cartilage and smooth muscle layer and outer adventitia so same like that and the irregular cartilage is present in a bronchi and the absent the cartilage are absent glands are absent in the bronchioles sub epithelial epithelial lymphoid tissue is more muscle is more in means the increase whenever the bronchi are getting smaller and they contract in asthma mainly and constrict and uh, these are this bronchi is a simple ciliated columnar first and later they convert into non ciliated columnar and next they convert into cuboidal in the respiratory bronchioles and have mitochondria and also lysosomes in them and they are having goblet cells non ciliated serous cells basal cells non ciliated cells of clara are present which are special cells which are mainly present in our terminal bronchioles and uh, cells of clara are mainly used for the protection against any microbes dust particles and they also act as stem cells and they protect against the emphysema and they are endocrine cells secreting uh, agrophil and secreting serotonin and bombesin so this is about intrapulmonary passages and basic and next uh, let us start with the structures of a alveolar wall so alveolar wall is mainly uh, lined by a flattened squamous cells which are present on the basement membrane and deep to it we have a connective tissue through which the pulmonary capillaries are running and next there are pneumocytes where the cells are forming the lining epithelium of the alveoli so the most numerous cells are squamous cells mainly the type 1 alveolar epithelial cells and the edges are attached mainly by tight junctions and 90% of lining of alveolar surfaces by type 1 alveolar epithelial cells 
and the type 2 alveolar epithelial cells are rounded secretory cells bearing microvilli and they are se having secretory granules and they are having multi lamellar bodies so the film or pulmonary surfactants reduce the surface tension and prevents the collapse during the expiration and the surfactants are having phospholipids proteins glycosaminoglycans which are proteins are produced in mainly type 2 cells that is produced by cells of clara and the bronchial passages and the type 2 cells multiply to replace the damaged type 1 cells and the type 3 cells are also known as brush cells and the macrophages are called as dust cells they are seen in conjunctive heart failure as heart failure cells because these macrophages engulf the rbc and they appear red in color so 200 million alveoli are present in a normal lung and the total area is about 75 square meter and 125 meter is present for the exchange available for the exchange of gases and the greater part so remember this uh, the area where there is exchange going on it will be very thin because both carbon dioxide Oxide and oxygen need to exchange between the blood and air so greater part of the lung is covered by the serous membrane that is a visceral pleura and the serous membrane is flattened mesothelial cells which is present on a connective tissue and deep to the pleura we have our sub serous connective tissue which divide the lung into lobules that is having the lobular bronchiole blood vessels lymphatics and also nerves and the basal lamina and the lamina propria are having elastic fibers in the lung parenchyma pleura small bronchi and prevent the collapse of the alveoli so the pleura are the flat mesothelial cells plus connective tissue and uh, these cells are elastic having blood vessels having elastic fibers blood vessels nerves and lymphatics and adipose tissue is present under the parietal pleura so the vessels and nerves the bronchial artery supplies the lungs in bronchi and also respiratory bronchioles this bronchial artery supplies and the walls of the bronchi are having plexus of lymph vessels and the lungs are supplied with the autonomic nerves mainly sympathetic and parasympathetic both efferent and efferent supply the bronchial musculature the vagal stimulation is done for the bronchoconstriction the efferent fibers are mainly uh, acting upon bronchial glands and the efferent fibers are acting upon the walls of bronchi alveoli and efferent play important role in respiration by respiratory reflexes so once let us check out the structure of our alveoli lining so here you can see the structures of cells lining respiratory passages so the first one is a typical ciliated columnar so the typical ciliated columnar cells look like this and next the second one is a goblet cell so as we say uh, goblet cell so this is a goblet cell and next uh, we having the third one is a serous gland you can see and the fourth one is a basal cells which are mainly used to replace the damage or lost cells and the fifth cell is a breast cells over here and sixth is the clara clara cells and seventh is the ergophil so these are the cells which are present in our alveolar or scheme to show various lining of our respiratory passages and here you can see some of the cells to be seen in relation to an alveolus as we discuss the type 1 cells type 1 alveolar epithelial cells and these are the type 2 so you can see type 2 having some spiky structure and these are the macrophages and these are the capillaries around the alveoli which are mainly used for the gaseous section you can see this membrane is very thin mainly for uh, availing the gaseous section so that from the capillaries the carbon dioxide reach into the alveoli and from the alveoli the oxygen reach into capillaries so the, the exchange takes place like this so this is all about respiratory system histology